Australia faces a really significant cultural and historical gap in terms of being competitive in artificial intelligence compared to many overseas locations. Do you feel Australia is falling behind in artificial intelligence take up? Why is this the case? Hear from a former TEDx speaker and award winning educational entrepreneur with expertise in AI and robotics on this episode of Tomorrow's Tech. I'm Karthik Singh, joined today by Michael Milford, Acting Director for Centre for Robotics at the Queensland University of Technology. Welcome, Michael. Thanks for having me. Let's have a look at QT's Centre for Robotics and what it's all about. Michael, your startup Matrills gave me five STEM education. What are the challenges of starting a STEM-based startup focused on child and young adult learning? Capturing the attention of a younger generation with really an unprecedented number of distractors vying for their attention is really challenging. Products need to be exciting, engaging over the long term, and really professionally produced for an increasingly discerning audience that's used to slick technology from major corporations. Ideally, the STEM education is seamlessly embedded into everyday entertainment that kids would consume anyway, regardless of its educational value. Finally, it must be self-sustaining and hence should really be commercially viable without reliance on intermittent government grants or the ad hoc generosity of individuals. Absolutely, there is no rule that STEM education can't be fun. What gaps do you believe Australia needs to fill in an AI to compete at an international level? Australia faces a really significant cultural and historical gap in terms of being competitive in artificial intelligence compared to many overseas locations. It's really completely normal for a young tech researcher in the US to have floated in and out of multiple startups, uh, perhaps some of them being failures, and for it to be completely normal, no big deal. By the time that person reaches their late 20s or early 30s, they're quite experienced in both academia and the tech sector. We don't really have that culture yet in Australia. Moving seamlessly between industry, academia and startups is doable, but quite difficult. Both my brothers and my nephew are in the US and have been involved in running or selling large startups in ways that wouldn't have so much been impossible here, but would have been substantially more difficult. I agree, Michael. In your view, how can the universities providing education in artificial intelligence best prepare students for real world opportunities? Universities need to stay really agile because what constitutes a good education in rapidly moving technology fields like AI is always changing. The bar is also rightfully getting higher. It's not enough to just train people to become technically proficient, but they need to learn about and understand bigger picture issues like ethics, legal regulation, and the societal impact of some of these technologies. The tertiary education sector, and really this goes for all education sectors, needs to not only try and keep up, but really anticipate these trends so that it can provide a multifaceted, rich education to best prepare our students for their future dynamic and ever-changing careers. Well, there are some great insights for all the universities out there. From your perspective, what will it take to enable a widespread adoption and uptake of artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence in many ways is no different to many other technologies in that in large part, you can judge its success by how well it benefits and is taken up by the most marginalized sectors of society. Affluent, well-educated demographics using 
and benefiting from a new technology like AI is very much normal, but too often minorities, poor people and other neglected demographics don't gain any benefit or even worse, suffer because of perhaps new biases or discrimination introduced by these new technologies. Development of new technologies like AI really needs to be centered on all humans from conception all the way to deployment and beyond. Another critical part of the puzzle is demystifying these exciting but sometimes quite confusing technologies like AI so that they become as familiar at an intuitive level to everyone as the technologies that have brought us electricity and cars. It's great to hear your perspective, Michael. Thanks for joining us on the show today. It's been great to chat. To our viewers, if you want to be a part of AI community, stay tuned weekly across tomorrow's tech LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram channels for our Believe in AI series. Want to engage with us? Leave a comment below of what you think will accelerate Australia's take up of artificial intelligence. We look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching and see you on the next episode of Tomorrow's Tech. Tomorrow's Tech, presented by 3.digital.